Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. So today is all about designer tables. And I have a commission piece to create for a client. The client wanted a red and gold round little end table. So that's what we are going to make. Now, very important. If you're working on wood and you're only doing one layer of resin as far as the entire project goes. In my opinion, you should never do one layer of resin. It should always be two, especially when there's color involved. But if you're doing only one layer of resin on your piece of wood, you have got to prime the wood. That live wood, although cut and sanded and everything else, will continue to breathe and it will cause an, um, uh, an immense amount of air bubbles that will not stop. You'll keep popping them. They'll keep coming back. Now there's an exception to this rule and this is my rule. Now other people may tell you to do other things. This is what works for me. Whenever I do resin, I always do a minimum of two to three layers because I like to create depth in my artwork. This piece of wood whether it breathes or not, and it creates a bunch of air bubbles in the first layer, it does not matter because I'm going to put another layer of resin over it and you're not going to see those air bubbles. So therefore, I do not prime. Again, though, if you feel better about priming the wood, then you go right ahead and prime that wood. Uh, I just like to save myself a little bit of time because I know I'm doing more than one layer. So... This is a red pigment paste that I mixed into, I believe it was like 10 ounces of KS resin. And all I'm going to do is smear it around the entire table. You want to work from the inside out in a circular motion. I use my hand, but if you want to use a spreading tool or... Um, a piece of plastic to spread it out, you can do that. But it's very important, start in the center and in a circular motion, go around and around, working the resin up and over the edges. Now you saw me use my heat gun there for a second. It's a little cold in my room, so I was just heating it up a little bit to get it to spread a little easier. I find that, you know, some people are really afraid to use resin and I really hope that if you've been thinking about trying it that you do try it because once you get the hang of it, it it's just such a dream to work with so I spread it out I'm pushing it over the edges and then I will be adding in the gold um about that gold that I'm using, that is called liquid gold. I have it in my Amazon shop, but a lot of times it's sold out. You can buy any type of a liquid gold leaf or a liquid spray, or I'm sorry, a spray paint that is gold, but it has to be a chrome type of gold. Um, there, there is definitely a difference. I have a can of spray paint in my mm -hmm. Amazon shop that is the right type under resin supplies. And I also have a small uh, bottle of liquid leaf in my Amazon shop that is the right type. This type of gold in resin creates the most magical effects you will ever see with a gold. You don't have to use a lot of it. Uh, for that three ounce Dixie cup, I probably used um, a quarter of a teaspoon of colorant. And all you have to do is take your second color, whether it's gold or not, and kind of just drizzle it through that red coat. And then you're going to blow those colors back and forth, back and forth. Now I do have this motion that I'm doing right here coming up in real time. I slowed it down so you could see how slow I'm actually going. For filming purposes, 
especially with resin, you have to speed up some of this stuff or it would last. The video would be an hour long and nobody wants to sit for a whole hour <laughs> listening to me. So um, I just got a little more red mixed up there and I put the gold down, blew it around. And now I'm adding just some more red to break it up. When you're doing a project like this, it's a lot of repetitive, you know, put down gold, put down red, put down gold, put down red. Another thing that you can do to your gold, which I'm doing right here, is pour a little clear over it. And that really creates a lot of depth and uh, cells and all kinds of fun things you'll see in there, which that is going to come up right now. I am... I just love this footage you're going to see. All right. So this is real time. Watch this gold. Now you can see how slow I'm actually going when I'm doing this. Pay attention when I, I blow it up, blow it backwards. You're going to see these little cells that form. Um, that's how you create depth. Just by doing that. Put down any color, doesn't have to be gold, with a little bit of clear resin on the top of it and blow it back and forth. Watch this. You're going to see these really cool cells. Do you see those? They're just really, really pretty. So that's it. I let the table um, sit up overnight for 24 hours, and then I came back and did a top coat of clear resin. I'm just showing you again, you know, in real time, how slow I'm actually going. Just take your time. You have time to uh, relax when you use a resin like KS. It's not like the store-bought ones that, you know, you only have 20, 25 minutes to work with. Is that long working time really, really helps. And the resin, the reason why I love this resin, and I've used almost every resin out there, even like the um, boat resins. I I've been doing this for many, many years. I like this one because it has every single quality you want in a resin. Non-yellowing, low to no odor. I don't smell anything. Um, unless you stick your nose right in the jar and with it, uh, it's got the 45 minute working time, but I'm telling you, I get at least an hour to an hour and 15 minutes out of it. It has no VOCCs. So, so that's a good thing when, you know, you're thinking about your health. Uh, you should always wear a respirator. I'm wearing one here. That's why I have to do a voiceover for this. Uh, you should always wear a respirator and gloves. Um, it's got a very high heat tolerance. In fact, I'm going to say I think it may be the highest out of all the resins. So if you make coasters and you let them sit for the full 40, 30 to 45 days that any resin needs to fully cure, it will not leave rings when you put a cup on it um, or stick to a cup, I should say. Uh, it's, it's just a really, really great resin. And that's why I buy it and I also promote it. I don't promote things just to sell them, people. I promise you that. I buy them and I promote them because I believe in them. So I'm just coming back in with some gold. Now this gold, I am not going to blow around. This time I'm going to use my torch and then I'm going to show you what this does when you do it that way. Because I'm telling you, it looks like somebody took gold chains and laid them through the resin. It is absolutely beautiful. So you get two different types of outcomes when you use this stuff. So you could tell the ones that I blew around, it's more lacing through the resin and um, there's the cells. But then right here, I hope you can see how it looks like chain links. There's a good one coming up here somewhere right there. 
It looks like actual links of a chain in the resin. Absolutely love, love, love that. So to get that effect, you just take the, the popsicle stick with some um, gold resin on it and kind of zhuzh it through the resin. Drag it through the resin and then go over it really quick with your torch and you will get that chain like effect. Again, it needs to be a resin or I'm sorry, a gold that is a chrome type gold or a gold liquid gold leaf. And of course you can look around, you can find copper and silver liquid leaf too. It doesn't have to be gold or you can buy a spray paint that is a chrome um, silver or chrome copper. There, there's, I believe it's Rust-Oleum that sells a chrome line, but it's a lot of fun. You will not get this effect using any type of a powder uh, or a mica, sadly, when it comes to the gold, that is. So now you're just going to let it sit overnight for 24 hours, and we're going to come back to do the top coat. So it's the next day. I'm showing you that I use these big cups on the table. I just flip them over and lay a canvas on top of them. That's how I protect the surface from dust and from, you know, hair, all that kind of stuff. I also have a baker's rack that's covered that I use. But for this table here, I was out of room. So we're going back to the cups and canvas trick. <laughs> so I've got to do a top coat. So this is what I mean by multiple layers. Now, what that top coat does is it protects that first layer of resin that has all the color in it. And if you've used resin before, you'll know that when you do your artwork, when you look at the surface, it's going to have little pits in it. It's going to have little flaws. This top coat is what gives that glass-like finish. So I always, always, always do two layers. Uh, and it's the same process, you know, mix 50% of the hardener with 50% of the resin and, uh, for three minutes, making sure you scrape down your, your tops and, and I'm sorry, scrape down your side of your cups in the bottom and scrape off your stick, you know, make sure you mix it up really, really good. Pour that over the entire thing, rub it all over the sides and the top. And then torch and, you know, you want to torch every 15 minutes for, um, bubbles. You want to make sure you definitely torch for bubbles every 15 minutes for the first hour, and then you can cover it. So here she is, all cured. It came out absolutely beautiful. And my client was extremely happy with this when he got it. Um, so now I just need to show you how to put the legs on. And it'll be a complete project. But you can, like I said, you can do this with any size piece of wood. Uh, it's a really inexpensive way to make some designer furniture. So first we need to remove the drips. What I do is I heat up the drips really good with my heat gun and then voila, you peel the tape back and it comes right off. Now, one thing that is absolutely normal is that little bit of stain, staining you see there under the tape. It happens. Mm -hmm. You can either paint the back of the table or just leave it alone. Also, right here, you're going to see sometimes the adhesive from the tape sticks to the wood. And this is just one way to get that adhesive off. Just take the tape that you just peeled off and rub it on there and it'll lift it right off and you just you know keep doing it until it's all clean 
So now we need legs for the table. Lowe's sells hardware right next to where they sell the legs. And um, the tags match each other. So hardware A or B, you've, those brackets I just showed you was an A bracket. So you can get either one of those. And it's very simple. You screw it in. Well, you find a husband to screw it in if you can. <laughs> and then you just screw the leg right into the bracket and you're done. You have yourself a designer table. It's that simple. And my client, as I said, was extremely happy with this. So all is well in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like please subscribe, click the notification bell. So you know when the next video comes out, uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, all the social media links are in the description. I also have a pouring group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. You could join me there. Link is in the description. I love you all. And I want to thank you for joining me on this journey. And until next time, my friends, Happy pouring.